uh, it's fantastic to be here. And I, I'm just wondering if the winning side could actually organise a meeting that would look like the losing side. <laughs> um, but it's been an extraordinary few weeks since that extraordinary day on the 18th of September. I mean, who could have written the script for where we are now? Within a week, we were back at war in Iraq. There was four billion going to be missing off the Scottish budget, um, and we were every all our, our kind of true. Now, now we see the, the real fight, about it. so on and on and on it goes. But the most extraordinary thing has happened. Uh, it, the most extraordinary thing happened across Scotland, anyway, with with the growth of all these different groups um, and people being genuinely energised and interested in politics for the first time. That was a, a, an extraordinary thing to be part of and none of us will ever forget that. But the more extraordinary thing is that it's not, it, it's not slowing down, it's keeping going. And I've been uh, fortunate to be at two or three meetings now across the Highlands and Islands um, in Sky a couple of weeks ago, the same kind of meeting. Um, over 100 people in Sky have turned up and the drive to establish a group, a common wheel group, a women for Indy group, the growth of the Green Party, the growth of the SNP, uh, Labour for India, and individual folk just wanting more information, wanting to know. And we have to capitalise on that and capture that. For me, one of the most extraordinary things I think was how many people learned uh, so much more about Scotland. And I, my personal feeling is that we're, for so many of us, huge swathes of bits of Scotland that we didn't know anything about. But we're getting to know more and more. And more particularly, we're getting to understand how politics works and how we can energise local communities actually to become actively involved. And political activism, I think, is the key to everything that we're going to do in the next few years. Um, it seems now that, and I'm not going to swear because this is being recorded, but, um, you know. Um, <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> given that that's the situation, it seems now, to me at least, that we've come out of this incredibly well. The losers are the winners, and that's how it feels. But the road to independence is, is now on our map in front of us. That's where we are. And we have to believe that and know that it will happen. Do you know, after the 18th of September, um, I said, I, I, I never used to know whether we would see independence in my lifetime. Now I know I will, because it feels now that it's just around the corner. And that's not, I mean, I can imagine, you know, people saying, well, this is flannel and it's nonsense, but it isn't, because the energy in this country, Scotland, has changed dramatically. Um, and it's much clearer, I think, becoming much, much clearer in everybody's mind exactly why we need to have self-determination why we need to have our own government and what we can do. Now, I uh, have been asked to be on the board of Commonweal, but I can't talk to you about Commonweal at the moment because I'd be a bit of a fraud. There was a meeting, first meeting of the full board. It's, it's a brand new organisation and it's fantastic that the, the movement is not starting somewhere else. It's starting off with a head start, if you like. In every corner of Scotland there are people now who know about Commonweal and want that to work and see that it has a real place. There are some extraordinary people involved with it. Um, the meeting on Wednesday I couldn't go to because sometimes the Scottish Parliament gets in the way of politics. <laughs> um, uh, but I do know that the, the energy in that organisation and the people involved with it are sound. They're absolutely committed to the uh, ambition for Commonweal and what it stands for. And when we say that we want Scotland to be uh, a fairer country, we, we, we want to do things differently, we can make a difference, then I believe that to be absolutely true. I mean, it will be 
down to each one of us to make that difference and to play our role in seeing that we achieve everything that we want to do. As Ali someone said, you know, the dream is still alive, and very much so. Um, so, in good heart, I think, we go forward from here. And if it's not clear to everybody what their role will be, this is part of it. It's still, the, the, the referendum, far from being over, it seems to me, has, has absolutely sparked um, the real road to independence. So, I think you really want to hear from Robin, we want to know uh, where we're at, so do I, um, I have to say. But although I'm uh, new to the board and hope to have an active role to play, I do see that we need to dispel a lot of ignorance, particularly um, across those people who voted no. Because I think that the, the, all of the issues that were raised that were seen to be the reasons why people voted no, and there were a myriad of reasons why pe people voted no. But I think that it's almost like a kind of coconut shy now, and what we have to do, our ambition has to be not just to work with the 45s, but to work on the 55s. To really get our message across that this isn't, this is not some mad utopia that we're looking to create. This is real, this is positive, and something that will be, you know, good for everybody in this country, regardless of the vote. We will eventually forget that, because I think the, the wave of, of action and the wave of conversations that are happening, using common wheel and the information that's being produced, I think, is, is going to be one of the parts, a vital part, maybe, of how we see Scotland going forward. There's the other exciting thing is, of course, we've got a big vote on, on, in May next year, 2015. And I hope, I would love to think that that prediction the other day <coughs> would have come true. But you know, I suspect we can make it come true. We might have to be strategic, we may have to be really smart, but we could make that happen. Um, the, the situation of the Labour Party now is, is quite extraordinary. Who could have written a book for that? And I wonder how good Joanne Lamont felt when she, uh, when she did that <laughs> as, she, as she walked out the door, because that's what she's done. Um, and that's, that's all it, in our favour. It has to be. We have to see that as a positive thing. But Scotland will need an active opposition. To, uh, uh, that's what will make uh, politics, I think, uh, can keep it exciting. So let's watch the fight. The fight is beginning now. The arguments will happen. But what we do know is that the boundaries now are very, very, uh, on a very sticky wicket. And that's the boundary between Wales and England, between Scotland and England. And it's, it's not all about nationality. It's about the opportunity for the countries of these islands actually to work together. And anyway, we had all that during the East campaign, we're going about that. The, the case is made, the case is made, but, but taking the knowledge and the kind of research that's done through Commonweal and persuading other people, showing them in the evidence of the work that we can do in communities, I think is what we have to do. And Commonweal has a big part to play in that. So, I'm not going to talk anymore, but would like to ask you to welcome Robin Calpin, uh, whose brainchild really uh, Common Wheel was. Um, and the word Common Wheel, I think, is, is really significant too. If any of you have ever seen uh, the satire of the Three Estates, which is a play written in the 16th century uh, by Sir David Lindsay, but really the, the Three Estates, of course, being the the, uh, the church, the state, and the monarchy. But the, um, really the best lines come from John the Commonweal. So let's hear the best lines from Robin the Commonweal. You welcome Robin.